What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Tindo Show. This is Tindo, and this is the lovely Hannah. And here's what's going on today's episode. We're going to keep things really simple. We want to just chat with you guys about whatever you want to chat about, whether it be collecting, whether it be reselling, antique malls, you name it, we're going to chat about it tonight. But the reason we're keeping it simple rather than going with the normal shenanigans, which is not to say there won't be some shenanigans tonight, is because, well, we've had some really, really serious internet problems today. And so, uh, basically, the equipment we're streaming to you on right now is not our usual set of equipment, which means anything could go wrong uh, on this show. And if it does and we disappear off your screen, well, you know why, because we've been having some internet problems. Basically... Rather than streaming on our normal rig today, we're streaming on our laptop, which we don't normally do. And then instead of streaming from our A camera today, we're actually streaming from our B camera and we're using a completely different set of audio equipment because things just went wrong this morning. So I figured that'd be a great opportunity to turn today into just kind of a Q&A uh, discussion. So before we even get started today, definitely drop your comments or topic suggestions below and we'll get into some, hopefully something good if you guys have good questions. If not, we'll just stand here and look at each other. <laughs> Because what else do we have to do? Uh, but before we even get into that, Hannah, let us know who's here. We've got Robert Tolan. We've got Harry Potter Freak. Welcome. Uh, Robin Cherry, Disney art craft fan, Louis Bass, Oscar Prank. We've got tons of people here today. Very nice, very nice. Well, before we even get started, guys, hit the like button. Uh, that will definitely help pull a few more people into the stream before we even get into it. Uh, but other than that, I don't know what else to really kick off the conversation with. Hannah, how has your week been? Oh, well, it's been all right. I've cranked out. How many jeans do you think I cranked out this week? You want me to guess? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. man. Well, <laughs> I know how many jeans I've cut the pockets off and prepped for you to sell. <laughs> but I don't think that's, that's a really trustworthy number, is it? No, probably not. Because <laughs> you, you keep your orders for your custom jeans that we make. Um, you keep them prepped in grocery bags. I do, yeah. You got, a lot of you guys aren't going to know this, but she'll prep a pair of jeans, put it in a grocery bag, tie it up, put a sticky note on it, and she's got a shelf for the prepped work. And um, you've probably had a lot more prep than I even cut up. So I'm going to guess you've probably come close to 20 in the last three or four days. Am I anywhere close? That's pretty close, I would say. I want to say, like, I didn't exactly count them, but based on, like, my memory, I'm going to go with like 24, 25. So it was pretty close. <laughs> it's not bad. 20, I mean, that's a lot for us. Uh, it is. We've only been doing our custom clothing reselling the way that we're doing it now for a few months. Like we're really, really early on in it and we're learning a lot about how to do it better. And we're just at our limit. Uh, the number we're selling, we're somewhat struggling to get them out uh, in a timely manner. Uh, we're, we're telling people before they even order our jeans that they can take as long as a month to receive them. And most people are being pretty okay about that, but some of them are taking a month. And, uh, you know, it's, it is what it is, but that's kind of how our week's going. We can't really say good or bad. It's pretty much just been jeans, jeans, jeans. It's been a lot of work. I mean, I told myself, I'm like, okay, I have a goal of what I want to set, how many I want to get out the door by the end of the week and I'm pretty close to it. So that feels really good. But even better is that I got a bunch of them prepped. So I've got a bunch in those grocery bags and ready to be put together, which is really exciting. Cause yeah. then, then I fly through them. Then I can just like zip, move on, zip, move on. We're cutting it out guys. You'll just have to, we're trying to get to a point where uh, we're caught up enough or into a rhythm where we can ship a bunch of jeans, have a week to be gone on the road, come back, ship some more. This is kind of what we're trying to do. Uh, we don't know how it's going to work out very much. It's very much still going to be the next time we go on a trip. The whole point of that trip is going to be a giant experiment just to see how we can fit our current, uh, resell into, uh, into our lives because we can't, you know, we can't just travel and leave for months on end like we'd like to at the moment because all of our income are these custom jeans. So it's very true. That's where we're at. That's <laughs> that's basically a description of our lives. But uh, tell me what the people are saying. We've got 100 plus people here. That's exciting. Got welcome, 100, welcome. 128 people so far. And Mike's messy room says, "Looking sharp, my olive dude." My, is this olive? <laughs> I mean, 
mean... It's, I mean, that's, it pretty much is. Yeah, it's like an old khaki, I would say. This is a Sony camera with semi-okay to moderate color science, so I don't know how exactly it's showing up on the camera. It is It is very olive. I, I, I probably would have just called it brown to be a boring person. <laughs> And that also brings up another important point. I had really, really nasty plans for this suit. I was going to do some <laughs> terrible things to it. That sounds so wrong. Well, really I was, was going to do some terrible things to it, and you guys were going to show up and LOL at me, but I put it on and liked the fit too much. <laughs> so this suit, uh, this suit gets to stay. And what do you think about it, Hannah? I mean, honestly, whenever you got it at the bins, I was like, I like that. I think it's a nice yeah. color. I think it looks really good. So whenever you told me what you wanted to do with it, I was like, I nasty okay. things. Sure, if that's what you want, <laughs> it's fine. Well, now I've got to find another suit for next week's live show so that I can do the bad things to that. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Tune in next time to yeah. find out what we're talking about. For sure. What else? Oh my goodness. Um, we had somebody suggest. We dress up in characters. It said, is Maya, <laughs> Mia said, I always love the outfit choices you guys should do. Try character dress up one weekend. We what will certainly, think? we will certainly do that. There's, oh, I have way bigger dreams for this live show than we currently have audience or ability or even funds to, to do all the crazy things I want to do. But there's a part of me that every episode is like, oh, let's, let's dress up this way or that way. And it's just right now to continue to crank out daily videos. <laughs> Some of our biggest, bigger ambitions have to kind of been, be put on simmer, but definitely, uh, especially like, you know, Halloween rolls back around, we'll for sure find some costumes to wear on the live show. For sure, I mean, here's a good uh, costume recommendation from Cody. It says we should find a raccoon costume. We can be trash oh, yeah. pandas. Well, speaking of which, <laughs> Hannah, go ahead and stand up and show off this uh, trash Yay! panda shirt. It's so cute. You guys do me a favor right now, just so I can gauge how this works for me. This would actually be a really helpful YouTube thing for me. If you would just scroll below our video, no matter what device you're on, and let me know what device you're on and if our merch is showing up right below this video. I'm not talking about the link in the description. I'm talking about, do you see t-shirts right down here below this video? Uh, if I could get some sort of gauge on how widespread it's showing up, that'd be really helpful. Because as you guys probably know, we're we're a rather small YouTube channel. We're not even medium, right? We're we're small. We're about as small as you can get. And uh, bigger YouTube's have bigger YouTube channels have more access to the tools that let you sell merch or let you comment and do. There's just we don't have as much access as other people. So it'd actually be really helpful to know how many people it's actually showing up for. Because, you know, there's some YouTubers, no matter what device you're on, that merch stuff is down there. But us, it's like really hit or miss. Uh, what else we got? We've got some good questions coming in. Um, we've got some people here from Mail Time today. Oh, yeah. Nathaniel Frisbee, glad you liked the Joker giant scissors joke. The, um, <laughs> I did. <laughs> it. So yeah. Serious. And it's down here, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I've kept it in our letterbox. That was pretty good. Uh, Mr. Frisbee, let me know. I'd like a follow-up. Uh, is your name actually Frisbee? Because if so, that's super awesome. Uh, or is it just your username? I'd be really curious to know. Uh, what do we got? 90s with GSD. Thanks for becoming a member. Awesome. Hey, if you just became a member, you have special emoji. So light Hannah up with those uh, <laughs> Hannah Bob special emoji for the members. But thank you very much for that. Um... Yeah, so mail time was good today, and I I've I did not plan this, but now that we we're posting mail time videos on Sundays and then doing our live show, it's kind of funny how much, uh, how or how often mail time is informing our live shows because there tends to be something in those boxes that makes me go, well, this is what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> like this whole cereal thing we did is because one of you crazy people sent us three boxes of cereal, which we have subsequently eaten all of now. I mean, we've got a little bit left of the Cocoa Puffs, but those will be gone today. Well, that's because you're the only one eating them. <laughs> <laughs> I ate all the Golden Grahams. You did, and I had to buy another box because yeah. you're like, Golden Grahams are the best now. <laughs> Turns out, and we didn't even, we didn't even rank Golden Grahams on our uh, official ranking. We didn't, no. I mean, that was a surprise for me too. We started uh, throwing bowls of those around. I was just like, these are 
solid. Yeah. Are very good. It's definitely a cereal that I didn't remember how much I liked. But what else we got? Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel Frisbee says it is his last name. That's awesome. This is so dope. Uh, did you, Nathaniel, did you watch our episode? What was it? Yesterday's episode at the bins? There is an official Frisbee magazine. And it was really strange. I don't know how official or unofficial it was because, as some of you may know, Frisbee is actually trademarked. Uh, so that's why, like, disc golf isn't Frisbee golf. They wanted to call it Frisbee golf when they started it. You have people that are disc golfers now getting a little butt hurt when you call it Frisbee golf, but it was always going to be Frisbee golf. It just turns out someone owns that trademark. So uh, I don't think that magazine that I found was actually Frisbee trademarked. I think it was just an official, unofficial kind of thing. It was really weird. But just so you know, all just so all of you know, there are... 100% Frisbee magazines out there. There also is, what was the other one called? The sack one? Oh, I don't foot, remember. Foot sack? Football? Foot, oh, no. hacky sack. Well, no, no. I know no? it's, the real, the real thing's hacky sack, but there's a magazine, official mail-in, get your subscription magazine for hacky sack, but it was called like foot sack magazine. <laughs> I swear to God. I approve go, that. <laughs> go, go back and watch our Ben's episode from yesterday. That was a real thing. I guess I need to watch our episode today. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I even told you anything about it. Nope, I don't know anything about it right It was now. weird. But we've got some mixed reviews on the like merch showing up at the bottom of the is video. It, is it just like 50-50? Yeah, some iPhones work, some don't. Uh, some old iPhones work, some new <laughs> iPhones don't. Some... It, listen, it is completely random. Yeah. So I, when we first were allowed to... It's actually a really, I don't want to say high honor, but it's not easy. And even a lot of people our size aren't always able to list their merch right below their page like we currently are. Uh, but I, whenever we were given that ability, I went and looked at some YouTubers and I noticed like Linus Tech Tips, probably one of the biggest YouTube channels I personally frequent. Uh, they, on if, you look, if I looked at it on my iPhone, my old iPad, no matter what I looked at it on, I could see their merch below their page. But then of course, as soon as ours went live, you could kind of see it on some devices, not others. And it's just a, I don't want to say priority, but we, you are prioritized in the algorithm depending on your size. Yeah. Uh, it's just real thing. But I appreciate you guys gauging that for me and letting me know. It is, like, there's, there's no rhyme or reason, right? Yeah. That's what I expected. Mike's messy room said you have to shut off the chat to be able to see it on there. So maybe that's the, well, the hiccup, but... For some people on phones, maybe yeah. it could be, but yeah, it's uh, it's still good to know. It's good to know if it's there or not, because you know we uh, we're not trying to just sell merch all crazy, but I do plan on continuing to make really cool designs like the one that Hannah's wearing to pair up with what we're doing from month to month. Maybe maybe month to month there will be a T-shirt that somehow coincides with our ever-changing intros, right? You guys, uh, if you're if you're pretty new to the channel, you may not have even noticed this, but every month on the first, I change our intro, I change our regular music, I change a lot of aspects about our videos to fit a new direction, just to keep things fresh, because we've been doing daily videos for almost two years now, and it's very easy to get bored doing this. So this is one way I try to keep things fresh. So I might try to go even more narrow in the future to where we um, do a new shirt every month that replaces something like the Trash Panda shirt that coincides somehow with the intro and the new direction. Uh, th this might be something we try. And, but that's uh, that's only important if we're able to put that merch in front of you guys like that. You know, it'll, it'll work out in a cool way. But what else do we have? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag on you for a minute. Me? Like you, you have made Don't do a it. couple of different like merch things so far and you've always have clever ideas but this shirt i don't know if like you just reached into my brain for a minute and oh like, really what would hannah like, like well i adore this shirt that might have been what happened because i basically woke up in a cold sweat one day with that idea which it was very specific it was the trash panda with the duck coming yeah. out of a trash can it was all of that <laughs> You know, I was like, well, what's the mascot going to be? And it's like, well, I, a rubber duck, because I was thinking about it for several days. The rubber duck coming out of the trash can on its own makes zero sense. But uh, the trash panda makes sense, right? It does. And, and then <laughs> the, then you see the way that the, stand back up, then you see the way that the duck actually looks at the trash panda. That's my favorite part. That longing, like, <laughs> I love you so much look. I almost put hearts in his eyes, but I was like, I don't need to add another color to this design. That'll just make making it more expensive. Yeah, and it, 
I think the simplicity of it really works. You can you can tell that he really adores it just with the way he's yeah. looking at it. Well, I that's a that's a great representation of how I feel about my rubber ducks that you see <laughs> all around this room. <laughs> well, just that feeling whenever you find something at the thrift store that you've been wanting for a really long mm -hmm. time, or like something that you really cherish because it was something from your childhood. It's just that feeling of nostalgia or just just shock and awe that you feel is just such a specific thing to thrifting, I feel. Right. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I know it is. Uh, yesterday, that Ben's episode, I was just suggesting, you know, talking about the Frisbee magazine and stuff, like, the stuff I found on that episode to bring home, like, I was so excited about it. I, and that's, it's even more so Ben's for me. I, I, get a, I get a little high, a little kick out of regular thrifting, but every time we go to the Ben's, I feel just like that trash panda. Because I, I feel like I'm coming out of the trash can myself. Because what feels more like being in a trash can than digging in a bin? Oh, for sure. I mean, there are some days that you are actually digging through literal trash. Quite, I mean, quite literally. There's like coffee filters in there and like boxes of, I don't know, um, my brain would do something weird, but I was well, like, I mean, you, tampons, you yeah, you name it, a box of it shows up in the bins at least once a month. That's not, that's not even really a joke. It's really true, and I mean, for the most part, I feel like our bins is very good at weeding out some of the garbage mm -hmm. um, compared to some others we've been to. Yeah, like the Vegas bins we went to recently, it was a lot more mixed together of just miscellaneous stuff. Yeah, so. well, it was like, what's a good way to explain it? The sp the small stuff yeah. that usually ends up in a trash can before it comes out at our bins definitely was still in the bins, which is still, you know, an okay thing. But what else? Um, do who you made the art for the shirt, right? Yes, correct. Absolutely. From I made it from scratch, drew it up. I, I now to be clear, I'm, I'm a pretty terrible uh, artist when it comes to just like hand drawing things per se, but three-dimensional shapes, recreation, you know, that kind of thing I've, I've, I've gotten really good at over the years. Um, Be More Joker 13, thanks for becoming a member. Thank you very much, and uh, spam those Hannah Bob emojis now that you have them. <laughs> Show everybody what they look like. I worked hard. I designed those, too. I, I shouldn't brag on that. They are not special. <laughs> it's but just... Hey. It is a Hannah Bob one, so I feel special well, when you do it. Well, you know, I, let's talk about that for a second, because we're talking about a little bit of design here. I do a lot of design for our videos. Title cards, you know, our intros this week is like an arcade fight. There's a lot of design going on there. Um, I've never had to create emoji, quote-unquote emoji, before. It is such a small, small, small <laughs> form factor. It's near impossible to make anything come through. Uh, so like our emojis are like my Tindo shades. Uh, so if you become a channel member, you actually get, I think you start out with green, but every month you remain a member, they change color all the way up to like red or yellow or something like that. But it was even really difficult to put that shape right there into, uh, emoji format because they're just so small. I mean, it was, it was so difficult. That, that'd be really funny. I mean, I've never designed an emoji in my life before, but I can imagine it getting that that detail would be really difficult. Well, this video, the screen you're looking at me at me on right now is probably 1080p screen, which means there's a there's uh, for a cross there's uh, 1920 across pixels. And so emojis are made up into like 10 by 10 or 7 by it's like it's nothing. It's just it, it's a little more than that, like maybe 20 by 20, but it's super super small. And I'm not good at it. I'm not good at small <laughs> form factors. <laughs> Um, this, I'm, I'm curious how much, well, there's a little bit more that we can talk about with this, but Annie Minnie said, can you guys make a large tumbler or a turvis for your merch in those, or I use more of those than mugs, I'd buy one. How much more merch options do you think we will get into or maybe not? What do you think? So it's tough to say. Um... The cool thing about the merch stores that we're basically partnering with to, to do the merch is there are more options. Like people are requesting tank tops. I'm going to be able to do that soon. Um, but it's the, the problem becomes surface area to be printed on uh, or, or how much of the surface area there is or what shape the surface area is, okay? Because, like, already I'm not the happiest with our distributor because, uh, I mean, stand up one more time, and we're just going to keep showing this shirt off. Uh, see how much of this shirt the Trash Panda takes up? 
Yeah. Well, when we screen print something with my own really expensive screen printing uh, setup, you because of the way our machine's made, you can only get about 75% of that. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily, with our current distributor, there's a good bit more space. With some of the t-shirts, we're able to take up more. Um, but it's really random, and it's really outside my control how much surface area on some items can be taken up. And so what's happening right now is I've went to design a couple items and I've got my samples or whatever, and the logos that we have are too small or too awkward on that format. So I know this is a really long-winded <laughs> answer to what you're asking, but I would love to do a tumbler, and I'll certainly try at some point. But if, if I don't think it looks good, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. And there's a potential when perhaps we're a little bit bigger down the road and, and we can essentially rely on a few more sales to switch to a different distributor where you know but right now because of how small we are and how much we can realistically project to sell we have to remain with what we're doing um but i've already like even coffee cups you'd think would be the simplest thing but like i did our trash panda logo on like a coffee cup and some other stuff i just hated it it just doesn't always fit well but we'll see we'll definitely see i think I think next month we'll drop a tank top since we're in summer and we'll see how that goes. And then we'll try something, something more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, a tumbler, something more uh, accessory. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hard goods is where I was going yeah. with it. But um, Hippie Mer Mermaid Bear 23, thanks for becoming a member. And I love your name. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> username. I, I will say continuously on our channel, I'm never let down day by day, but people joining our community and, and their usernames never let me down. We've got some good ones. Oh, for sure. I, I, it's probably one of my most regular comments for people joining our Discord, which there's a link in the video's description if you haven't joined that already, come join it. But I, I, people all the time join our Discord, and I'm like, I love your username. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had someone just recently went to the... Um, the Vegas bins okay. that said it was better than their SoCal ones that they usually go to. Oh, Robin Sherry. Okay, for sure. The the SoCal ones, they're not they're just not great. I don't I don't want to trash them. They're fine. I've bought stuff there, but they're not great. Yeah, I mean, how many of them? You've been to more bins than I have. I've been to all the ones in Southern California. There's a few up the coast, and I've been to all of them at least once, but most of them a couple times. Uh, we lived in LA prior to moving here. So what, how long has it been? Three or four years, maybe a little more? A little bit more, but yeah. Uh, it feels, some days it feels less, and some days it feels more, but we lived in LA for a time before moving here and I shopped at the bins when I was in certain parts of the town. And this was before I knew the word bins, right? We call them bins because we're regulars and that's what regulars shorthand refer to the bins as. Goodwill does not refer to their own clearance centers, clearance outlets as bins. No one working for Goodwill says this. Um, they very much so call them outlets or clearance centers. And some of you maybe can comment below and let us know, but like the Goodwill outlet in your area probably has a different name on the outside of it than ours. I've been to dozens now all over the country. Plenty of them have been called a clearance center like ours in Phoenix is technically called, but plenty of them have been called really wild things like what's the boot barn or what was that one? Oh, Bargain Barn. The Bargain Barn. Uh, is that Alabama or? That was in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. Nowhere close. Uh, but yeah, that's uh Here's an interesting question. Ryan Stone says, question, have you guys checked out Bin Mayhem on 43rd Avenue and Bell? road down the road from savers on bell road Do no we? but you either mentioned it to us before or you're the, probably the second maybe the second person to mention it we haven't been matter of fact someone commented about it and i thought well obviously we need to check this out and then i couldn't remember what it was called and then i couldn't find the comment that er someone originally suggested it so now that you've said it out loud and hannah knows what it is we'll remember <laughs> because she's the one with the memory do you know what it is at all i've never heard no. of it uh, I can, so they told me in the original comment that we got about it, but I can't remember. Oh, well. But we'll, we'll check it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> we always, we always love new things to go to on this channel. Matter of fact, uh, one of the two antique mall, uh, places that we have antique booths in here in town, which we really like doing and really like being a part of one of the, one of the ones we have, we never would have gone to or found if someone hadn't suggested it. So yeah. we love, we love those kinds of tips for sure. What else do we have? Let's see. I'm scrolling through some questions, trying to 
find something new to talk about. Well, yeah, they're coming in a little too fast. <laughs> <They are. laughs> go, you going back to the earlier ones? Yeah, we had a bunch of really good ones right in the very beginning. But uh, in the meantime, spam some questions so we can uh, we can chat about some things as well. But um, well, I'll tell you what I've been thinking a lot about too because we were talking about the merch and uh, maybe here's another idea I can run a run across you guys and tell me what you think. You may or may not have noticed that uh, in the cover photo for this video is the artwork that someone drew for us on mail time today. And um, several, several times since we started our channel. Matter of fact, all the way back to the beginning, before we even had like 100, maybe 200 subs, someone sent us some fan art. And it was something we never considered could ever possibly happen. It was, we just, it, I, I couldn't imagine someone drawing a picture of me. But now, I mean, I have a box over here with probably 20 drawings in it that came with letters and stuff. I, I kind of thought, and this is, I don't normally show behind the curtains for this kind of thing, but as I said earlier, we change our intros on our channel so regularly. I thought maybe a good idea would be to start taking uh, viewer submitted drawings of us and animating them for our intros or something like this. So I... I thought that maybe our live show would be a good time to bring this up because you guys would be able to, I might be able to gauge from you guys how many people might be interested in that kind of thing. I don't know though. I, didn't, I think maybe we're not quite big enough for that kind of thing now because 10,000 subs is cool. That's about, you know, that's about 7,000 daily views across the channel. And I don't know if that's quite enough to pull 30 drawings for 30 intros. Do you know what I mean? True. <laughs> but I really, especially since we got these drawings today, I really like that idea. So maybe you have an answer to that. I guess people that can draw might pipe up and say, oh, yeah, it sounds awesome. But even if you're not going to comment, anybody sending us drawings over the next couple weeks, uh, those drawings will probably be used on the channel just for funsies. For sure. Uh, I think they'll be good. I've been really liking the Mortal Kombat one. I think it's really fun. Yeah, it, it's gotten ridiculous over the last couple of days. <laughs> I think it just will slowly devolve and be even more ridiculous by the end of the month. Oh, yeah, by the end of the month, I'm just probably going to be fighting weird versions of myself or something. I don't know. Ooh, I see somebody spamming the emoji. Yeah! My favorite one's the Hannah Bob one. <laughs> I mean, I'm partial to it. Yeah. All right. Uh, We'll get into the meat of the conversation a little bit. Uh, we had a good question about reselling. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite place to resell? eBay, Depop, on e antique malls. What do you, what's what's the best way that we like to do it? Okay, well, I think maybe if you have an answer, you should answer it first because, like most things, I've got a really complicated answer. I know instantly what my answer is. <laughs> But yeah. it, I got a really complicated one. Mine's uh, a little bit complicated, but not not that complicated. Um, I feel like the easiest way to sell is different than my favorite way to sell. So because I'm a little bit more practiced. I'm a lot more practiced with Depop. I've been doing it a lot longer. I've been really figuring out the ins and outs of it. I really understand what it wants and how to kind of navigate it in a way that works for me. The easiest way for me is the antique malls because you put a price tag on it, mm -hmm. you throw it in the booth, and then you forget about it. Yeah. And that's incredible. But, you know, Depop has been really kind to me because, like, I've I don't, it's been a more close to my heart kind of thing because I really built that from the ground up. I really feel like it's, I've created a place where it's really my own and I can, um, I really enjoy what I'm doing on there. It's like a reflection of me and my personality. So that's why I really enjoy it. Um, some people can find the app to be a little bit like troublesome. It doesn't always have the best loading times and sometimes it crashes unexpectedly so it can be frustrating mm -hmm. but <laughs> it's it's really a fun place for me to sell um and i really enjoy selling clothes but if you're not selling clothes it's not the best for you you know you can sell dishes you can sell you know blankets and stuffed animals and music and all that stuff there is an avenue for that but if you're selling clothes that's what it wants so it'll really help push your items a little bit easier so it works for me because of that i really enjoy clothes so yeah it, it's a difficult question to answer and we're both gonna have almost non-answers because 
there's a difference between favorite what, or what makes us money. I mean, I, I guess a lot of people's favorite would be whatever makes them the most money. And definitely the, uh, the most you contribute to our income is from Depop. Yes. Hands down. We're both really not fans of eBay at all. And I think this comes through a lot in our channel because there's a great number of things we pass up at the thrift stores. Just read our comments on any given day. People, you miss this, you miss that. And it's like, well, no, I didn't. I'm just not going to sell that. We've not been selling much on eBay, which is actually quite funny because the way that eBay will often work is the more you list, the more you sell. That's kind of common sense, but it's also an algorithm thing. Oh, I posted all this stuff today. And then the next day you sell all the old stuff that you <laughs> didn't post yesterday. There's a lot of quirkiness to eBay in this way. And we've not been posting anything. And now all of a sudden, for no reason yesterday, a bunch of our stuff's been selling. We've sold some things we've had listed forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're really both honestly not fans of eBay. Um, there's a lot of reasons why I'm not hating on it. I'm not turning my nose up at it. I just preference wise, both of us just get really tired of it. Um, it's a lot easier for us to do much more specific things like Hannah's jeans. Uh, but as far as what's my favorite one, my absolute favorite one, the one I enjoy regardless of the money. Uh, I, I mean, I guess I'm gonna have to go with antique malls just because everything that made me the way that I am when it comes to being a pack rat, a junker, a trash person, whatever you, a trash lifer, if you will, uh, all of that came from yard sales and flea markets and stuff when I was a kid. And, uh, and my hometown has like four antique malls that are a lot like the ones you see us sell in. Uh, and I grew up every day, every weekend going to those. So I enjoy those the most. Uh, but they're, they're also not what makes us the most money. So I just want to make sure we make that clear. Uh, anyone else watching can definitely comment below and let us know if there's any other odd ways that they resell things that they like. I mean, I know a lot of people around, uh, well, anywhere, even where I come from, there, I know a lot of people personally back home that are like uh, yard sale lifers. Yeah. That they, they, are, they have yard sales selling their stuff, not unlike how we do in our antique mall, and they just move around town in different people's yeah. yards that'll let them. So that they don't look like the same yard sale in the same spot every day. So yeah, there's there's a billion ways to sell whatever you got. It's very true, and it's funny. They've I've run into people at the bins who are there specifically trying to find things to sell at their yard sale this right. weekend. And I I've always wanted to chat with them and be like, do you do this every weekend? Do you do you jump around from house to house to try to you know get get the yard sale market going um, or did you just decide to have a yard sale and then decide to go to Goodwill and just really stuck it up? Because yeah. that could be a really interesting concept, too. Yeah, I mean, my visceral reaction to thinking about someone just doing yard sales constantly is like, oh, my gosh, it seems like too much work. But then it's really not, because at the end of the day, what's really that different about throwing it out in your yard or throwing it in a booth? You know, I mean, I, as far as amounts of work go, it's not a ton different. So, uh but yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna pick antique malls. I just, but even then, I don't know, I keep wanting to change my mind, but <laughs> it, it changes. I think another important point to that conversation is our, our focal point of interest, we've been lucky enough in doing YouTube and doing this and doing that. Um, our, our focal point, we've been lucky enough that if we lose interest a little bit in something, we're able to kind of shift our interests. So you'll notice if you watch our channels on a daily basis that sometimes we put a lot more antique malls in, in our videos uh, than other times. And of course, because of the way that YouTube works and especially the way that a YouTube channel works that posts daily content like we do, you will have people in our comments all the time being like, well, why don't you do antique malls anymore? And it's, that's not realistic. We just have these almost monthly, bi-weekly cycles where we do, we just go, well, we're getting bored of this and making content about this. Let's focus a little bit more on this. Yeah. And so uh, some weeks I hate our antique malls. <laughs> so, but you know what? Actually, your question was really timely also because uh, we've had some crazy good sales weeks these last two weeks. Um, normally we have one booth that super overperforms and then we have another one that always does fine and then we have two more that are just all over the place, but all four of them this week have killed it. So, uh, since you asked this question this week, I love the antique malls. Yeah, it's been really good. <laughs> do you really enjoy like going and shopping through the antique malls? Like, whenever you get there, do you get that nostalgia feeling you had when Every you time. were a kid? Every single time. I feel like that would make the antique malls even, even more special to you. Yeah. For that reason. I mean, they do. I, I, I probably only shop them once every three or four times we're there, but. 
you know, I do a lot of card collecting and all the stuff you guys know I do on this channel. All those antique malls are great for it. I, I'm holding my back self back from buying stuff at those just constantly. We have, some people are chatting a little bit about eBay. Uh, Robin Cherry says she's not an eBay fan either. Mm -hmm. um, Harry Potter Freak said, I use, I use eBay to resell. I don't really have any other options. People in Guam are cheapskates. <laughs> <laughs> and they and, want the lowest price possible. I don't make any money back. So eBay it is. <laughs> well, uh, Rose, I'd love you to contribute a little bit more to this conversation. Maybe write up a little description for us that Hannah can read about. Uh, how selling in, in, some, in a place like Guam uh, works. Would you sell something on eBay in Guam? Are you pretty much only able to sell to people in Guam? I doubt that's the case, but I would imagine that 90% of the time your sales there will probably be to people in Guam because they probably don't want to pay uh, over the moon shipping. I'd love to know how that works out. But for those of you who are watching that are concerned about hearing negativity about eBay, um, I think we could probably explain this a little bit better. And this is actually a really good topic, I think, for a podcast type setup because there's a certain aspect about eBay that because it is so large, I mean, it, it, ha it doesn't have the monopoly for online sales, right? Of yeah. course, you have Amazon, but even then, it, you almost could make an argument about it having a monopoly because your abilities to sell used random junk on Amazon. Let's be honest, they're next to none. If, if, if you don't know this, Amazon doesn't like you selling used stuff. Not that you can't, but it's not an easy thing to do and they definitely regulate it very heavily. You know, the, the, the nonsense you can get away with selling on eBay doesn't fly on Amazon. Right. Uh, and there, of course, there's Mercari and there's all these newer age things popping up that are only really popping up out of a huge, not resurgence, uh, just a huge growth of aftermarket sales. Uh, so there are more places you can sell, but um, eBay is just so large. It's so impossibly large that there's no way that you're ever going to get treated by corporate eBay in any other way than just a number. So a lot of people that try to do eBay and then burn out really fast, it happens because it's very easy to make a few mistakes that are just past the threshold of what eBay's computer bots go. You've had too many bad sales. We're kicking you off. Yeah. We're, we're, we're changing your ability to sell. Or, especially when PayPal was a bigger picture of, of eBay, the horror stories, the constant horror stories of people having their funds held uh, for long periods of time or almost indefinitely at times, there's, there's, not to get into the scary stuff, but there's just a multitude of scary stories of how it goes. Um, now, don't get me wrong. There are people I know personally that have learned to navigate those exact things to the utmost of their ability and are amongst the top sellers on the entire site, you know, but it's all about how much work you want to put into it. Hannah's love for Depop in part comes from, uh, it's a smaller company and she actually has a rep because she is an approved member on the app. She has a rep she's able to communicate with about her problems. And of course this makes a lot of the things that would be scarier if you're livelihood were put into this kind of scary basket, this one, you know, this one thing, uh, a lot of that's alleviated when you're not so s small that you can't just get a hold of somebody when you have a problem, right. which I'm not trying to take a left turn here. I want to continue to talk about this, but like being a YouTuber, you hear all these just constantly. You probably see the articles like I do, if maybe not, maybe none of you have ever heard this, but there's a lot of things going around right now about YouTube about um, burnout and depression amongst YouTube creators and things like this. And a lot of those conversations are coming from the fact that, in my personal opinion, YouTubers are left out to dry by YouTube. If I have a problem, now that YouTube's part of our livelihood, there's no way I can contact anyone at YouTube to talk about it because there's a billion people doing what I do and there's about 20 people at YouTube headquarters managing it. This is not realistic. Um, so, one of the big benefits to these smaller apps, these smaller platforms like Depop, are they're smaller and you can talk to people. Yeah. Um, and, and not like YouTube, Google, eBay, these huge behemoths. So right. that definitely is part of, part of it. Um, but there's some people that are going to hear me say this and really just not care because they've really figured eBay out and they know how to... Uh, maneuver these things, but we don't want to work as hard as you have to to maneuver them. That's basically how we feel about eBay. Has anyone else said anything else about eBay? 
Yeah, um, Niagara Joe said during the lockdown he made like 30k on eBay. Bro, so same. That's, <laughs> it was crazy during the lockdown for just online selling in general. My Depop sales were inflated. All of our, our eBay sales were inflated as well. Our Facebook Marketplace and offer up sales were inflated. Everything was crazy. We definitely had a very inflated quarter for the, the quarter of the year that we were locked down. Um, and that, that's something from a lot of resellers I've heard, especially people who sell gaming or clothes stuff, which is our, our main thing, or uh, two of our bigger things. We actually didn't sell too much gaming related stuff ever at all until the lockdown. And then all of a sudden I sold like 25 Wii's. It was kind of nuts. It was kind of crazy. A lot of people are chatting about Macari. A lot of people in the chat right now use Macari, really enjoy mm -hmm. Macari. It's not something we have really dove into. I have much. bought a few things on it. Yeah. And our buddy, friend of the channel, Ivan, definitely has been selling some stuff on there. Um, he if does you, really well with it. If there's something specific to say about it, find it. Uh, but I'll say in the meantime, uh, I again, personal opinion, I can almost say this is factual, but the reason that sites like Macari are growing yeah. Larity is because they are smaller, they're a little less regulated, and... Uh, there's a lot of people bouncing off of eBay because things don't work out for them, too much competition, any number yeah. of things. And, and Macari, of course, is, and things like it are taken off because of it. Well, something I've really always talked about with eBay versus Depop is the culture. Yeah. I feel like eBay culture is a lot more... So you just, mean culture of, of... The people on the app. People yeah. People using it and the way that they use it and the way that they act when they are using it and talking to the sellers and everything. On Depop, everything is pretty, like, the culture is, is very positive, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I feel like everybody is very respectful of each other and very um, understanding and want want the transaction to go very well right. and very smoothly. And some people want zero communication whatsoever. They just want their item and then leave me alone. Right. Like, that's... And that's how I am more so. I'm like, I'm happy to chat. That's totally fine. But, you know, take your item. Everything's good to go. Like, we're good. Smooth. Um, eBay, it can be a little bit more of... eBay's the exact opposite. Yeah, it's a lot more of a hassle. They're like, they get the well, item. and then let, let me ask you this. How many times on Depop have you had anyone, after they've gotten their product, ask for a partial refund? Never. Never once. Never. And mind you, you're up to what? <laughs> 4,000 sales or something right. out over it's the moon? A lot, yeah. In the last year, year and a half, something like that? Right. How many times on eBay a week are you asked for a partial refund? A it's, few. <laughs> it's gotten to the point where if I get a message on eBay, I'm like, oh, God, what? Yeah. What do you need? And when you said the quote-unquote culture of eBay, that's what I thought of yeah. the most. There, there's just there's things like that that are unheard of on any other site that happen on eBay because it's just how it's been since 1998, you know? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Hippie Mermaid Bear says Hannah's on point. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Her looks or what she's saying? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm guessing Both. what I'm saying. <laughs> Both. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not saying we're just done with eBay. We're not going to sell on eBay. That's probably a good clickbait yeah. with the clip of this video that I'm going to no make. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's not a good place. And I don't think that eBay is going to go shrivel up and die, you know, but I, it, but I've talked to a lot of people who feel the same way about eBay. They yeah. feel like it's just the, this behemoth that's so difficult to just like, if you're a small seller on there, one, they care way more about the buyer than the seller, which yeah. is an argument, but there it's, if you're a seller in a difficult position in a one certain sale you don't really know who to reach out to you don't know what to do you you kind of just have to go to the mercy of the buyer whatever mm -hmm. they say goes and sometimes that's not fair sometimes there's situations where they are actually a scammer they are someone some prince in nigeria who stole all your money like yeah. that kind of situation can happen and you don't know who to turn to Whereas like on Depop, you definitely have someone to turn to. They will listen to you. They will get back mm -hmm. to you in a few days. And I feel like I know we haven't done a lot with Macari, but maybe that's something else that Macari yeah. has going for it, that it is a smaller app. Maybe they are a little bit easier to reach out to and deal with an actual person to help you with your problem, which is, is amazing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a difficult conversation to have because 
anyone who says to themselves, I'm tired of what COVID has pointed out to me, or I'm, I'm, let me rephrase this. COVID has come along and pointed out to me, I don't want to be doing this job that I'm doing. I want to get into reselling to sustain myself and or my family. This is, this is a comment, a conversation we've had dozens of times a week for, well, since COVID. Uh, it just, it keeps coming up. Friends, family, people we meet at the bins, uh, you guys we meet in public, this is the conversation we have the most. Mm -hmm. uh, and that being said, the unfortunate thing, I think, because of what resale has been for the last decade is that anyone who goes in their head, well, what would I have to do to resale to make a living? I think most people assume, they absolutely assume that they have to do eBay. And I think plenty of people unknowingly assume it's one of the few options or if not the only option yeah. they have. And I think this is really, really troublesome because I, I honestly think there's a lot more room for resell. Um, I, and again, I think people are going to disagree with me here. There's a lot of people I meet in public uh, who I have these conversations with who almost hate what we're doing as a YouTuber because they, we're kind of showing behind the curtain and getting more people into this. Uh, we can have that conversation. I definitely enjoy that conversation and welcome it because I think I have a viewpoint on it that's a little bit different than some maybe, but a lot of people um, don't like that we're doing it. That comes up a lot. But people that want to get into it, people that we meet in the streets at the Goodwills that will say, hey, I want to do this, I always get the understanding from them that they just think eBay's it or too much of it. And honestly, I wish I could think of a better way to say to them, just forget about it. It's not. I mean, I honestly think that if we had no other choice but to do our antique malls and that was all we put our time into, I think we could kill it and make a really good living off of our antique malls. I really do think we could. Yeah. The only reason our antique malls aren't making more money than they are right now is because we basically cut our, our life into basically a three-part pie chart. Yeah. Uh, YouTube, <laughs> did them, and antique malls. So yep. no one of those things gets all of our focus. And uh, But uh, I don't know. If you've got friends that are thinking about getting into reselling, consider not talking them out of eBay, but make sure your reselling friends know that eBay is not the only way. For sure. It's really not. There's tons of different ways, but... You know, eBay's not always the best choice for what you're trying to sell either. I mean, if you're if you're trying to sell like antiques, like an antique mall is a fantastic way to do it. You don't, but eBay can also work. If you're trying to sell clothes, Depop is a fantastic way to do it, but eBay can also work. Yeah. Like, it's a good way to sell pretty much anything, but I feel like anything also has another avenue that you can go down. like. Selling furniture on Facebook Marketplace is a great way to sell to make money. It's not yeah. something we do, but well, I know people that do it. But it is also a way we've discussed in the past. If we had to, we could make a living selling furniture off of off of Facebook Marketplace. Hundred percent. And matter of fact, there have been, I think it was prior to this channel, uh, by about six months. There were several months in a row we paid our rent just selling furniture. Yeah, uh, like we, we sold futons like crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, we, there was one summer when the college kids were moving in here. We're several blocks away from ASU. We sold so many futons to so many college kids. It was goofy. It was really goofy. Um, and some of you watching are going to know this. Some of you watching, and feel free to comment below if this is the case, are going to have plenty of things you've found out that you can resell if, you know, if the bottom falls out of what you're doing right now, there's plenty of you watching who have had this thought of, well, there's always, you know, some of you is going to be, well, there's always stripping. Or the, you know what I mean? There's always, but for me, Go it's always, the for me, it's always the futons. <laughs> there's always the futons. There's always futons. There's always money in the banana stand. Well, we got a giant bread truck. We can always haul a futon so that yeah. if you got a little Camry or something, maybe futons are not your best option, but you know, there's always something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is what I was hoping when we had our internet problems today that made me think, well, let's have a Q and A conversation type thing. This, this is the kind of topic I hope would come up because there's a lot here that I can't just stand and look at the camera and say, because we don't make that kind of content that I think these live shows will definitely in the future open up opportunities for. So let's, let's, uh, continue to talk a little bit about eBay maybe and wrap it up. I, I want to hear more what people have to say if anyone's said anything about their experiences or otherwise. Yeah. Um, let's see. This is an interesting one. Jessica Stumplin said, I, I was a substitute teacher. My husband is 
an elementary school teacher, I see how stressful it is for him to teach in person versus in virtual, and there was no way I was subbing this year, so I turned to reselling. I feel like that's a really, it, it, there's a lot of interesting ways that people have started turning to reselling through this pandemic, and it's really awesome how many people are showing up and, and starting to get into their own little small businesses. So. Did she say anything else about her experience, or she just said that's what she's... Uh, that's what she's had to turn to. It's what she's had to turn to, so it was part of that conversation. Yeah, we'll definitely add add some more to that if you have time to type it up. Um, I'd like to know how it's been going for you because uh, you would not be the only one. There's maybe been three or four people who uh, are in a really similar boat to you specifically that I've talked to. Uh, they were teachers or some form thereof, and instead of going back to that this year, they did exactly this, reselling. Uh, it's been interesting to hear just how many people have done that specifically. Um, I, I want to finish a point I made a minute ago. Uh, that I, Hannah and I are of the personal opinion, and this is going to border way more on opinion than fact, like some of the things that we've that, that have come out of our mouths. Um, I I think there is way more room for sustainable reselling than I think a lot of us could imagine. I think we have generated so much trash <laughs> that is reusable, and I think a lot of the path to actual sustainable recycling is the reusing of things. I don't own any brand new clothes except for my underwears and socks. <laughs> Every pair of pants and shirt that I own, well, this is actually, this is untrue now because you guys send me so many awesome t-shirts. <laughs> I know. But besides my awesome t-shirts, all my other clothes, they were bought secondhand, they were bought at the bins, my awesome suits come at me if you don't think they're awesome uh they're all from the goodwill you know and i and i and i think moving forward with sustainability there's only going to be more and more room to sell the trash that we've already made that we can't really get rid of there's and, a lot of stuff in this world and i feel like the amazing way that we can contribute to recycling in a really happy positive way <laughs> i i want to make a t-shirt that says friends don't let friends buy new coffee cups or some sort of yes some sort of suggestion like this. If you're leaving the house to go buy a coffee cup and you go to Target to buy it, screw you. Go to the thrift store. Screw you. Go to the thrift store and buy one. Have you ever in your life been in a thrift store where there was less than 5,000 coffee cups? No. 5,000 coffee cups. We don't need to make any more coffee cups. There's every cup. If there is a comp any company in the world that makes specifically company coffee cups, they either need to be closed down, they need to revamp, they need to make something more helpful. Well, I guess maybe we shouldn't put coffee cups in our merch store then. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut, me down. Shut me down. Veto me. I'm serious. There's just no reason for it. There's so, now, so many. Now, obviously, that opinion for me is not one I talk about a lot because it sounds crazy. What am I suggesting? We shut down half of all manufacturing in the world and just sell reused stuff? Obviously, no, we're not living in a dystopian society where this is necessary. But, uh, you know, it's about like this. Household recycling in the United States comprises less than 8% of recycling. Do you understand this? Yeah. That's not a lot. It's I think different. there's a lot of people that would hear that number and think, well, then why the heck would I do this? And that, that's a, because of the numbers. I think that's a sentiment that is understandable. But I think the reality is there's, you know, when you look at the parts of a hole like that, there's so many little parts. You know, it's like people get butthurt about wind energy because it's only what 14 percent it's some other smaller percentage of our total you know worldwide energy but it's just like anyone who is a energy specialist says no we need everything we can get we'd yeah. be dead right now without that 14 percent. so recycling as much as we're going to do we need that eight percent keep doing it there's no reason to stop uh but i i'm just saying that to say i think for the future i would hope that uh, a percentage of recycling nationwide in the world could become what we do us i mean why why buy a coffee cup yeah <laughs> go to the thrift store you can find one with anything you want at it just you have to go to two thrift stores the first one may not have it go to another one mary caswell and robin cherry both love selling used coffee cups on their ebays and everything so thank you thank you for contributing to <laughs> yes the Conti of coffee continue cups. living that hashtag trash life if that's the question someone needs to ask one of these days come back a month from now and ask me what is hashtag trash life i'm gonna give that speech all over again <laughs> <laughs> Shit. my coffee cup rant are you ready for this yeah just don't <laughs> buy brand new coffee cups um, i do you know yeah i just it's there's just some things in this world we've got enough of it's very true uh, JRPG Life said we prefer eBay right now because we don't have to get 
out of our PJs and someone wants to buy our stuff. We can just wait until the next day and we need to leave the house and we've already are ready to mail something. So that, that is something that's very convenient about online reselling in general. Well, that, yeah, just any online reselling, you know, you can say that about. And <laughs> we've definitely went through this flip-flop phase a couple times where, and I think, honestly, this was before the channel. Our main livelihood now is reselling. It was not before we started this channel. We, we transitioned into that on video. So if you go back and watch our back catalog, you will see us transition from full-time jobs into reselling uh, pretty clearly, I feel like. That being said, uh, when we were earlier on, we were doing a lot of Facebook Marketplace and things like this, and we would do periods of Facebook Marketplace and love it, and then we'd start to hate getting stood up, and you know, there's a long list of negatives that come with selling to people in person on Marketplace sure. offer up, and we don't necessarily need to get into that. I'm sure plenty of people watching know what I'm talking about. However, we would get tired of those things, we'd start doing eBay more, and then we'd get tired of that same eBay stuff we just complained about for an hour, and we'd switch. There was a period where we flip-flopped back and forth several times, because either one sucks. Either one has its plus and minuses. And I think that's a pretty interesting cap on the conversation from earlier. There's no form of reselling, to answer the original question, that isn't just about as annoying as it is uh, fruitful. But I think the draw for all of us to find a means to an end, which I say to say to, to make a living without having a boss or ha without having to do that traditional thing that we're honestly all openly or secretly wanting to get away from, I, I think that's the only thing that's ever going to get us through the bad stuff. eBay sucks. OfferUp sucks. Facebook Marketplace sucks. Mercari sucks. Etsy sucks. It all sucks to some degree. But, uh, you know, the, your question almost could have been... Uh, which one do you hate the least? Yeah. And, and I, maybe that's a pessimistic view to have on it. I don't know if anyone might hear that and think, oh, it's, it sounds kind of, kind of sucks, but it, it does. It all just kind of sucks, but it's way better than having to put adult clothes on and go to an office. I, yeah. Says the guy sitting in his living room amongst 4,000 video games wearing a Goodwill suit. Well, I mean, you there's, can... some, there's some irony there. I understand. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're right. You could say the same thing about any nine to five job. Like there, there's always something that is going to suck when it comes to trying to make a living. It's just how the world works, unfortunately. Well, what else we got? Uh, Sunblade Dragon said, Tendo, thank you for the dono, by the way. And Tendo, you haven't shown off the pin today. What pin are you wearing? Uh, I don't know how good of a look I'm going to be able to give to you because of the camera issues that I've said before. But this is a little, he's like a little wrestler, luchador, devil man, uh, Monsterito. Yay! Which is to say little monster <laughs> in Spanglish. And uh, I like him quite a bit. He's one of my favorites. He's handmade by my friend Ivan. It's going back to that art. I don't think he, talk, yeah, well, I don't think he has a merch store. One of these days when he does, I'm going to make sure he has these because I want, I want one of more colors. Um, but yeah. I appreciate the question from whoever asked it originally about, you know, the reselling question, because that was a great conversation to get into. It is. Um, so somebody else, I know we talked a lot about reselling already. Mm -hmm. um, somebody asked specifically, how does Depop work? So we can get into that a little bit or just a lot. Um, Depop, I mean, basically, whenever you are listing an item, there's, it's all very, very simplistic. And I'm sure... Um, just like with eBay, it kind of walks you through the whole thing. Um, you have to have your own phone number and then get into, to, to get, um, I think you're <laughs> making the explanation a little bit too complicated. I am. It's literally <laughs> in, an Instagram page with a buy button on every post. Perfect. That's yes. It. That's all you need to know <laughs> about Depop. Um, as far as signing up, it's just like anything else. Yeah. You have to prove you're you, and uh, you know PayPal is still a big part of their sales, unfortunately. Yes, for sure. We're, we're both personally of the opinion that PayPal can go ahead and die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes. it is still part of it, if that matters to you or not. Yes. Uh, but specifically with their question, they ask if you can sell things other than clothes. Yes, you can sell things. A lot of people do sell a lot of stuffed animals. They sell a lot of, you know art and music and um, dishes, home decor, that kind of stuff. However, I would put a huge caveat into the sell anything on Depop thing. Uh, Depop is a pretty good example of an app that you can look at where you have to understand its algorithm, which listen, 
frequent our live shows from now until the end of our lives, and you're probably going to hear me use the word algorithm way too many times. But, you know, it's such a huge part of our lives. A huge part of our success on YouTube is tricking the algorithm into thinking that we're cool so that it puts our videos in front of you. The only reason half the time that you ever got your first video in front of ours in front of you is because I did something clever, cool, behind the scenes, hashtag this, whatever, cover photo that to make sure that you saw it. Um, that being said, Depop is an app that you have to pay attention to trends and hashtags and uh, a million other things to hope that of the million, two million people on the app buying stuff that your items might get in front of some micro percentage of those so that you might sell something. Yeah. Um, I, every app has this, eBay has this. A lot of you might know special, uh, ta not tagging, but uh, titling techniques on eBay to make sure to add all these buzzwords so that it comes up in people's searches. The same applies on all apps, but, e but Depop is particularly driven by this. And the only reason we're doing really good at it, Hannah's in the top couple thousand sellers out of uh, out of a million uh the only reason that is because we've become really really good at that um yes. and I, I there's no real way to teach that without literally making a course like there's just there's there's a lot to it yeah there there really is um mars mars og says she's sold a lot of thrifted records on depop that's really awesome um, the th I'm glad you just read that because I was going to make a second point or if not the point I was going to make by saying that it's al algorithm driven. Um, a huge part of the algorithm on Depop is that they are focused on clothing. Yes. It is absolutely not a problem to try to sell other things on there, but Depop's not going to help you as much with other items as they are going to with clothes. Now that's not to say there's not pages on there that have built themselves around selling vinyl Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Pretty much take any one major thing that someone might resell, and there's probably a specific Depop page for it, but probably yeah. just one that kind of cornered the market on Depop for it, so that all the collectors out there on a Facebook user group know that that's the one corner of Depop you can go to to sell X, Y, or Z. For sure. Um, which is, I'm not trying to discourage you from selling other things on Depop, but it, listen, there's how many people watching right now? About 200 people. Mm -hmm. I don't want 30 of you or half of you to think, oh, that's somewhere for me to go expand my, my selling business. Unless you're selling uh, vintage t-shirts or customized denim or something, you're not going to be guaranteed success. But you can try. Yeah. Consistency is key on Depop. Very much so. Um, they asked, do you have to have a phone to use it? It is an app based. Yes. Um, you listen, it's complicated. That's actually a really complicated question for Depop specifically. Uh, for the longest time, you could only do it on the phone. They have slowly added user interfaces to the website, but it's still not all there. Matter of fact, you can't do all of anything on either. You have to have both. Uh, Depop or Poshmark? Uh, Curry like, asked. They look kind of similar. Is one better than the other? How do we feel about that? Ooh, um, both are better for different things. I think there's probably, I, I don't want to get in trouble for saying this, but I think there's probably more like soccer moms on Poshmark buying yeah, popular like, mom clothes. I don't know. <laughs> That's a terrible, <laughs> there's, there's fancy clothes on Poshmark. There's all yeah. the same stuff on there. But Poshmark, I feel like every time I get an article in my news feed about Poshmark, it's about Sarah's soccer mom selling her used clothing on there. Yeah. I don't know that Poshmark has as many dedicated, re my, my perception. Please take this with a grain of salt. Because take this with a grain of salt as someone who has sat and tried to absorb the information as it's come into his, his field of view. I have observed that Depop has way more... If you, I think you could put a scale of Poshmark to Etsy and put Depop in the middle. Yeah. Etsy is just like crafty. We never could give it the attention that it would have needed to be as big as our, as our Depop. For sure. And I feel like, I feel like Poshmark wasn't my niche. Like I, whenever I started selling clothes, I felt like I just wasn't connecting with the things that Poshmark wanted me to sell. I connected more with the stuff that Depop wanted you to sell, which is more the indie vintage kind of vibe. Not that you can't sell vintage stuff on Poshmark. It just wants you to sell a little bit more like Ann Taylor, Anthropology, Free People, like those kind of more branded things. So I feel like they both have their own place in reselling. Just depends on what your niche is. 
Yeah. Uh, that's uh, that's going to be true about the other five or six small to medium-sized apps that are more geared towards clothing. I mean, what are the other ones? Vinted, uh, Vinted Poshmark, Depop. Etsy. Uh, Etsy with a caveat because they also do lots of other stuff. Yeah. I mean, you could call Etsy the 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 oh what's a uh, the kinda, it's kind of comparable to eBay but more crafty. Well, yeah, the craft <laughs> capital. I was gonna call it like you could. I was gonna make the point. There's just so many avenues that Etsy's good for, like uh, cosplay. You know, oh, Etsy's yeah, also sure. Etsy's also the cosplay capital. Uh, what else we got? Let's chat a little bit more about this, and then we're going to get out of here. Uh, if you've got any more questions or anything to add to this conversation, please do, because since this uh, live stream has turned into being so much about that, you'll probably come back to our page tomorrow and see that I've retitled this video, Does eBay Suck? <laughs> and that way, more people will click on it tomorrow because they're going to want to hear this conversation. There's a lot of good info in here. We had, I'm going to move on to another really fun topic. Okay. Very, very beginning of the stream, someone asked... Um, at what point do you stop collecting something? When do you feel like you're finished like with something? Or do you just stop because you lose interest? Or Well, I mean, I, I collect enough stuff, all of it. Anything I can answer has happened to me at one point or another. Uh, and I think a lot of people watching that collect something are going to have a similar... Uh, are going to are gonna be able to answer one of a few things. They're going to answer, well, when I get all of them which is going to probably be more my kind of answer because I like completionism. I've always been this way when I was a kid and I collected things. I had to have one of every Power Ranger in this bag put away. Completionism is a word. Um, and it is something that describes me to a T. So that's how my mind works. Now, do I always in practice do that? Of course not. Uh, there's several things that have been on these shelves that we collected for a little while that I finally just went, why am I doing this? Let's get rid of them. Right. Uh, I mean, so like there was way more there. There are <laughs> the amount of Pokemon stuff on the shelf just off side of the camera over here goes in waves. I fill it up. I get rid of some. You guys send me a bunch and I add some of that and get rid of some of my old stuff. Um, for me, it's a constant rotation of what's most important, which for me is video games. Nothing matters more than collecting those. Everything is second tier compared to that. I love my Furby, but they're just below video games. It's just how, that's how it works for me. So when I get something new to collect or whatever, there's no telling when I bring it home what I'm going to finally go, well, let's just get rid of that. You know, like I'm collecting yo-yos right now because I'm <laughs> sentimental. My grandfather just died a year and a half ago. And uh, I, I've really enjoyed, you know, living out memories of him just with these yo-yos it just kind of makes me giggle and i like seeing them back there will i collect them until i fill a whole shelf in here i don't know um hannah's probably gonna have a very different answer to that than me because she never has been much of a collector i would say you with your brat stalls now that might be the first thing you've ever really actually collected yeah i mean looking back at my life i go oh I feel like I was a collector of that, but I didn't know I was. Like, I didn't go, I'm going to get all of X thing because I want to. Um, yeah. I feel like the first thing I look back at, at my childhood and go, oh, I was a collector of that was actually Bath and Body Works fragrances. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I would get the travel size of pretty much every single scent there was. I didn't care if I had the lotion, the body wash, and the body spray mm -hmm. of one scent. I just wanted one of of something of each scent. And so right. every time I went to Bath & Body Works, I was like, ooh, they came out with new orange sapphire. I'm going to get that today. And so, I mean, you know this because I've carried that collection from every single place that we've lived. I took it all to college with me. I took it all to California with us. Mm -hmm. And now I'm here and it's in our closet. Like, I, I'm not sure how much that answers that question. Uh... Uh, there's got. Is there a difference between collecting some nonsense and collecting something uh, consumable that you're actually going to use? I mean, I guess not. But true. Um, you will eventually use it all. Yeah, because with that collection, it does eventually go away. Right. So that's. Yeah, I mean the. It's the, interesting. The heart of that question is how the thing you collect takes up space and lives and potentially lives in your life forever. So, so I don't know. I. I so I'll, I'll, let me do this. Let me answer the question how I would answer it for myself. And then let me answer it with a bit of advice for people wondering uh, how to keep themselves from going crazy with the collection. How do I decide when to stop collecting something? I put things in tiers. 
of importance. As, as I've said, video games are most important. So if, if we never move out of this place, which we wholeheartedly plan to sooner rather than later, there's so many things that will leave these shelves to make more room for video games. Um, there's more video games off camera than are on camera right now. I have over 3,000. And so for me, it's not hard to make the decision on some of this other stuff to just get rid of it uh, for the more important things. So that's what I would do. Now, a little bit of advice to people trying to collect things, because I, I want to be honest here. Let, let me be perfectly honest with you. I think I am to blame for too many people in this world collecting more stuff. <laughs> um, and I'm not really trying to apologize for it. I'm just trying to be honest about my place in the world, and I think my place is thus. I think if we continue to make more of the content that we want to, more so than what we're making now, I think I will continue to be an influence for hoarderness, okay? <laughs> I'm not unaware of this. And I, you'll even, I, um, uh, I was reading in the comments of someone else's videos the other day, Pixel Game Squad, they shouted us out in their video, and uh, a couple people said in the comments, watch out, Tendo will get you collecting something faster than your, you know, faster than you can imagine, or like your head will spin and you'll be collecting something before you even know it. And I was like, that's great. That's hilarious. So I was like, all right, I'll fess up to that. So that being said, a little bit of advice. Um, there's a lot of different methods to, to doing it. And I, you know, like my Power Rangers shelf, I try to keep it half a bookcase. I've, I've gotten rid of Power Rangers stuff because it stops fitting and I'm not trying to collect everything. I'm trying to collect the stuff that makes me nostalgic and I'm trying not to go overboard. Yeah. Uh, Cause I've probably brought home enough stuff Power Ranger wise to fill three of these bookcases. And obviously that would be overkill. So find a way to limit yourself, uh, you know, see how much room your wife will let you have and then <laughs> fill that up and try to come off things when it's fill, filled up. Do you feel like you'll ever feel like something is complete? Like I don't need any more of that. I am, I am good. That is done. Well, I mean, video games. Yeah. Well, no, I guess the <laughs> ultimate answer is probably no, right? Yeah. Because they're always going to make more video games. True. So, I mean, yes, if we're saying, well, I'm obviously going to collect all the PlayStation 1 video games one day, no matter how much it costs me, I'm going to do it. Um, or uh, PlayStation 2 is the one I'm the furthest on, 700 games setting there. Uh, one day I'll probably finish it. But as a whole, no. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of if there's something, yeah, I mean, I only collect Dragon Ball Z VHS. Now, there are some other VHS, but they're just for display. For I'm not going for a complete Monster Ranch or VHS collection, but I am going for Dragon Ball Z. So I think it's tangible to finish that one day. Yeah. And I will never buy another VHS again. <laughs> Ideally. Never say never. Yeah, I know. <laughs> At that exact point, I'll start collecting, I don't know, something else. Well, I feel like... With my Bratz collection, I feel like there is a point where I will be done because they don't make Bratz anymore. Right. Well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're about to, so. They are about to make a new collection. Um, I think it's coming out October. It's right. toward the end of the year. But um, I don't know if they're going to continue making them after that. So, But I feel like I do have a point where I'm like, I don't want anything after this amount. Like... I think I just want one of each doll mm -hmm. from every collection. We can potentially talk about two of each doll so they both have their own outfit. Right. We'll see. The answer is no. <laughs> just, both of us are trying, but yeah, no. Most things, probably not. Uh, let's get like one or two more questions in and we're going to wrap this up. Uh, uh, let's do two more questions and then I'll, uh, I'll talk about some channel things and we'll, we'll be done. We've got a, a little fun thing happening in the chat where people are shouting out things that you've inspired them to start hoarding. All right, let's hear them. <laughs> List them. This is, I don't know if this is going to make me feel bad or not. I know. Harry Potter Freak says she now is starting to collect uh, Power Ranger stuff because of you. Okay. <laughs> Guilty. And then um, we've got... Oh, shoot. I lost them. Hold on. Well, the rest of you, shout them out below. What have... what? What is my... Okay, let's do this. This will be a good way to end the video. What do you blame Tindo for? What do you blame? Just in general. Blame me for something and then let's quit this video. This one's not your fault. Hippie Mermaid Bar Bear 23 says she started collecting brat stalls now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's on me. You are also <laughs> culpable. What else? Oh, brat stalls and plush. Oh my goodness. Um, Monster Rancher. Wow, Has someone actually fun. collected Monster Rancher stuff? 
Well, uh, one of these days I'm gonna have somebody here to be a cameraman so they can move the camera along with us when we move, <laughs> and I, so we can move to these collections when we talk about them. But my Monster Rancher collection is finally starting to fill out. Uh, if you, if the person who said Monster Rancher is not already a member of our Discord, go join us today and post a picture, please. I want to. No, no one else. <laughs> And the history of making this channel has ever really had a that like a big conversation about Monster Rancher with me. What else? Oh, for sure. Mike's messy room said Beyblade. There's something <laughs> to like that. That's a rabbit hole. Oh my gosh. Well, comment below again and let me know like have you like what have you been collecting? Old stuff, new stuff, whatever. I finally for the first time took my I had two I don't have one over here, crate baskets full. You know the ones. I buy them all the time at the thrift store. Full of Beyblade parts. And I for the first time can say beyond a shadow of a doubt, I understand each individual generation of Beyblades, how they're assembled, what kind of parts they are, what launcher goes to them, what kinds of ripcords go to them. There's five or six different sizes of launcher and ripcords per generation, and it's a lot to keep your brain wrapped around, but I can finally say I can do it. Um, as of this week. <laughs> Last week's live show, I wouldn't have been able to say the same thing. What else am I guilty of? Um, there's a bunch that I'm guilty for, actually. <laughs> Good. That makes me feel better. Uh, a bunch of cording work collectors now. We've got a bunch of Pyrex collectors now. That's That just warms my heart. Well, you guys' cooking is going to be great. Well, it warms my heart because they're, they pro well, you know the hope is they went and bought those dishes at the thrift store instead of buying the new Pyrex yeah. stuff from Walmart. And that makes, that makes me feel particularly good it does the the recycling continues we've got mini mickey mouse plush a lot of furby really we're responsible for a ha! lot of furby you know why that makes me feel good do you know how many furby we're saving from the landfill oh my look God. look these guys thank you Aww. they all say thank you <laughs> that's great oh that's no, so good well that was what it was with uh pixel game squad they uh, he he's <laughs> i don't know how far he's gonna go I'm not saying he's a Furby collector like me now, but he bought himself one. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Skylanders, that's good. Jeans and Dishes, that's another one I'm well, that, responsible for. Skylanders is a good one because we're going to, uh, we just made a big, banging, aw super awesome Beyblade video for our second channel. Go watch that if you haven't already. Rubber Duck Yellow is the name of the channel. Search it out or go click in this video's description. I've finally made my Beyblade video that's kind of out of the way, and I'm going to continue to move through my collection and make videos about my childhood obsessions. Um, and, of course, uh, Skylanders is not one that was my childhood's uh, obsession because I'm a little bit older than, than that would have called for, but I do have, like, 80% of every Skylander ever made, and I'm still collecting them, and one of these days I'm going to make just a huge Skylander video. Uh, but something to add to that I just rediscovered today was Metabots. Does anybody remember that? I don't have any. Oh, my gosh. Do you remember that? I, that vague, that's vaguely familiar. I'll need to do a Google I'll, search I'll later. have to show you some pictures. I don't remember something, YouTube, I don't know what I was watching, but something mentioned it, and I was like, oh, my God, I had so many of those. So that's something I'm going to be checking every bag toy uh, bag wall toy for in the coming weeks to try to find some so I can make a video about that in the near future. Uh, that one really excites me. What else? Sure. Gaming manuals. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love this. There's now a, a push for Tendo's Furby Rescue. Yes. <laughs> make a t-shirt. Well, there you go. That, Furby Rescue. There you go. That's next month's t-shirt and uh, <laughs> intro. Just like Furbies in a nursery. <laughs> That's, I, I like that because I imagine how many of those bad boys are already in the trash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They Aww. deserve to be saved. Don't, don't, don't make me feel sad. <laughs> Curry Lord remembers Megabot. Meta, Metabots, Metabots, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. Metabot, the PNW Trends remembers them too. Yeah, it was good. It was a great show. The toys were even better. Um, they kind of had that customization component that I was already obsessed with as a kid. They had it all. Uh, and I can't wait to find just one of them at the thrift store. That'd be fun. Uh, Floyd61124 six, six, said you need to make a Furby Rescue commercial with Sarah McLaughlin music. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright strike. Yeah, no, I like that, though. That'd be hilarious. We definitely... I Listen, we're not, we're not here on our YouTube channel trying to make 25 channels, but there is a way in which... We have multifaceted interests that it has been a good idea to make a separate channel. I understand not all of you like Pokemon and, and Beyblade and all that, so you're not going to want to watch our second channel. And I don't expect you all to go sub. But I, one of the things I always wanted to do is more sketch comedy, kind of movie-driven, funny stuff like that. And, I've, and, I, and honestly, in the near future, the only way you'll see us or incorporate that will probably be into these live shows. I mean, how cool would it be to do an intro on this show every week with a sketch about Furby or something dumb? 
Uh, but I, I can't tell you how many times I've thought, I'm going to sit down and make a sketch channel. I don't have the time or ability to do that right now. But um, if I did, that'll be at the top of the list to do. Sarah McLaughlin, uh, <laughs> McLaughlin uh, Furby Rescue. Kristen, Kristen said, um, oh, Kristen was the, someone that sent us package this week. Okay. I recognize that name. She said she's collecting random nonsense now. I wonder how many people in this world are collecting just random stuff. Well, I would say that's probably the thing I'm most guilty of. Anyone who we have inspired to go to the bins, they've went to the bins, they've dung to the bottom of the bins, and they've got the nonsense out of it and kept it for no reason. <laughs> for I, no reason. I mean, we've had people join our Discord and show us pictures of their nonsense cabinet shelf. And it almost, I'm, listen, I'm not obsessed with myself. I'm not try, I don't want any of you to worship me. But a few people have posted pictures of their little tabletop in their, their game room. And it looks like a shrine to Tindo. Or if not a shrine to me, it's that meme. What would you put in a summoning circle to summon me? It's that stuff. And I just go, okay, cool. Yep, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's, I know how crazy that sounded, but it's true. It's unfortunately true. I'm really shocked how many people are are collecting things because of me. I well, thought you would be the culprit. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I obviously I made the question about me. I should have made it about us because I, I will say early on, it, I was I was blown away how quickly w when you started on this channel. Which, mind you, I made videos on this channel by myself for several several months before Hannah transitioned from her full time job into a position where she could do this with me especially on a daily basis. Uh, that took even longer, but she was not almost a part of the channel at all when I first started. But once you started doing dishes daily, because we were going to do the antique lawn stuff, it wasn't, it wasn't weeks in that one of the most regular comments was, I never would have considered paying attention to dishes, but thank you because I'm either now collecting them or so many people added them to their uh, repertoire of reselling, or reselling repertoire. What a, what a wild <laughs> twist of the tongue. Reselling uh, it, it happens so fast. So I, I, because of that, it's not, it's not that surprising. Uh, I definitely can see how that happened. It's pretty wild. I mean, I, I do have a, a love for vintage dishes. Every time I walk through the dish section, I'm just like, I could see myself coming home with some of this stuff. <laughs> but how many plates do you really need for two people? How many cups? How many mugs do you yeah. really need? <laughs> Let's for be sure. serious. Our mug cabinet. I know you don't go in there very often because oh, you don't I've drink seen a lot of coffee. It. It's dumb. <laughs> it's bad. Like, I've got one Snorlax mug. <laughs> she's got 33 kitten mugs. They're, they're all cat mugs. <laughs> <laughs> and we had Ivan and Monique here a little bit ago, and I um, offered Monique some coffee, and I said, which cat mug do you want? <laughs> I have a bunch. <laughs> and she's like, um, what's your favorite? I'm like, this one. Look at that. Uh, thank you. it back on yeah it's all right well that's that guys obviously what you just saw happen is a great all right guys i think you can hear me now you're not gonna be able to see me this is gonna be the best way to end the stream ever but uh hit some f's in chat real quick before we get out of here and we will end the stream here um i appreciate i appreciate each and every one of you coming by and hanging out with us today uh, you all rock. Thanks for all the questions that we got. Uh, we got some really good ones. We had a whole conversation about eBay. Hey, look at that! Webcam! <laughs> Booyah! Day is saved. Um, yeah, we're going to actually get out of here, though, because this whole setup that we're using sucks. I'm surprised that it lasted this long. If you just joined us on this show, or you've only been here since halfway, I explained at the beginning of the channel. We had some pretty serious technical issues that made us have to switch to uh, uh, a rig that we don't use. Look at all those Fs. That's the <laughs> so most F. That's the most Fs in chat we've ever had. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next week on our normal rig. We have the internet repairman coming tomorrow to fix us up, and uh, it'll all be back normal. But thanks each and every one of you for hanging out with us. Thanks for being here. Uh, we will see you next Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern. 
I hope, though, I'll see you all about seven times between then on our daily videos. Uh, hit the like button before we get out of here. If you're somehow watching this and you haven't hit the subscribe button, I don't know how that happens, <laughs> but it does. So hit the subscribe button before we even get out of here. Help us get to 15,000 subs. And then there's also a whole slew of links below this video of our other stuff. You can check out our other channels and other stuff we've got going on. Follow us on social media. You know. <laughs>